Hello everyone, I hope you're doing fine. My name is Skyline, and today we have another solo queue school. This one was sent in by a player named Nathan, and he asks about his soldier play, specifically uh, about when, how to engage and how to when to break off, I guess. But I'm going to focus on the how to engage part, because this is something that is crucial all the way up until you get to the tippy top, you know, going for top 500 and stuff, is how to actually move forward and engage as a DPS player, if you're playing a DPS player, particularly those like Soldier or McCree. And so we're about to see this player go in because they got a pick. And now I love to talk about angles, angles this, angles that, and we're about to see it right here. Oh boy, we're in big danger right now, aren't we? <laughs> we're, we're in big danger and it's not getting any better. So, you know, I can understand the player wanted to get into the wall, right? If we look back, our Reinhardt goes in, a wall comes up, and there's a gap. So definitely our entire team is going in, everybody's in, so I can understand wanting to go and help them. That's fine. It's not even the worst play necessarily. I think it was a pretty good decision, actually. The problem is what came afterwards. So right at this point when we're like, okay, so we're alive. This is a real fight, it looks like. We are not all dead yet. The first priority should be getting into a good position because as a DPS, you can't do a lot of damage until you get into a reasonable place. So over here would be great in that little building. Up here, uh, over by the stairs, there's there are lots of things to hide behind. Even this wall is about to go down, right? So we can go and we can hide back uh, you know, in the direction of our spawn as well. Instead, the player just sort of stays out in the open. And it's not going to result in his direct death, but because it's so dangerous, he's jumping around, and he's going, whoa, whoa, and his camera's going all over the place. So he manages to get the May, but really, in that amount of time span, he could have done a lot more, and still, we're not finding cover. That resulted in being hit by the soldier. We had to go for the health pack. Our team is going to die because of it. So we didn't die there directly because of being unsafe, but you could clearly see how it really influenced the amount of DPS we could do, and it was absolutely shocking that he got out, by the way. So skipping ahead here is maybe a little bit more clear of an example, and you're going to notice there's always someone behind him. Never is he actually looking at everyone. So got a good opening, right? Used visor. We're going to jump in now, and this is clearly dangerous right off the get-go. There is a May behind him, as well as a Reinhardt, who, you know, are fine targets to shoot at as well. The Reinhardt doesn't have a shield up, but he doesn't even know that there's a May behind him yet. That's only me telling you. It's not only. It's not until she throws it down and he actually turns around. Oh look, there was a vulnerable May there the entire time that he could have been shooting at. But all right, all right, it's forgivable. He was trying to push in. If we continue onwards, so now the blizzard goes down. Everything is okay. We see that Mercy comes in for a res, and once again, though, instead of retreating back. Like here, this is a great place, right? This is great. I mean, we could go and poke out in that direction. We could go up the stairs. There's all sorts of safe places we could get, we could go. But instead, we're going to come all the way out in, uh, into sort of the danger zone here. And once again, there is always going to be someone behind us. Right now, there's a Reinhardt behind us. And as we continue onwards, there, well, fortunately, our Zarya sucks him up. But there's still, by the way, a Reinhardt behind us. And as we progress through the fight, now we're going to turn this way, and there's a May behind us now. And so always having someone behind you, not only does it get you killed, but more importantly than that, just look at his movement. Look at how look at how frantically we have to move because of he's always jumping around, and he's going up, up and down, and, and around, and home. It's, it's really, really scared. He's flicking his camera around everywhere. That's really reducing the amount of damage that our hero can put out. All right, so later on they finally take the point, but uh, so this player has kind of wiggly waggly aim in general, and I, I like to let people have their preferences, but I really think, just really my honest opinion is that this crosshair setup is not really a competitive crosshair setup. I can't imagine that this oh God, is no. really helping, particularly because so he's using long crosshairs with Bloom, and I think that this is a big problem. 
So as a lot of you know, I use the short crosshair with no bloom. I'm, I'm not saying you have to use what I use, but I'm just showing a comparison, right? Particularly with the hit markers, because I think that's one of the biggest issues with the long crosshairs with bloom on. So with the crosshair, it's basically focusing where your attention is. So here I'm focused on this small little, I can't even circle it with the pen, the small little dot there. And so if I have hit markers, going on they're outside of where I'm really focusing on I, I honestly don't even notice the hit markers because I'm focusing on the middle of the crosshair and the hit markers are off outside of it so it really doesn't bother my vision next up we have short crosshairs with bloom and so this is a pretty popular option a lot of people use this uh, and again we have we have sort of the same thing going on where we're focusing the middle of the crosshair and the hit markers are kind of off to the side they're a little bit closer to the center but it's really not too big of a deal because, you know, when you get a headshot, your hit markers get larger. Oh, can I find one? <laughs> so when you get a headshot, your hit markers get larger, but those are still pretty much outside. So that's not really bothering you too much. But now with long crosshairs, if we get the bloom up, you can see that because our crosshair is much longer and bigger, we're focusing on generally a larger area. Not only is there a bigger, more distracting thing moving, but now the hit markers start to get in the way because now your crosshair and the hit markers start to sort of look similar because your crosshair is so big that the hit markers are now kind of with your crosshair instead of outside of your crosshair. So basically, I just feel like my the entire middle of my screen is constantly flashing when I do this and I can't really see anything. So I, like I said, I'm not one to harp really on people's preferences and if it works for you, it works if it's just a little graphical setting. It's just to me, when I see someone have this kind of wavy aim where they aren't really, they're not focusing, right? They're not looking and specifically clicking on people. They're just sort of aiming in their general, in their general direction like this. And this isn't just that one clip, by the way. This player overall has very wavy aim where he, if you look, he's not really focusing. He's just like, ah, oh, just general wave right in your direction sort of thing. And I think that's partially due to the crosshair not allowing him to focus and track properly or click accurately. So I might be wrong, but I would suggest if this player has not tried a different crosshair to try that out. So let's do um, one, one more. Well, okay, let's do one more uh, and then we can all go home and call, call it a day and all that. So our hero comes in, we're attacking point B and I'm sure that you all know what I'm going to say because it's the theme of this video. We're standing too far out in the open. We have too too much stuff going on. We need to limit the amount of stuff we're actually looking at. We need to be a little bit safer. So standing behind these things is really good. And I'm sure he's going to turn in a second. Okay, so standing behind here, behind here, maybe using this as cover, just standing behind something, being a little bit more focused in what you're looking at instead of this spinny, spinny, have having to look all around you sort of thing because right now again Symmetra is in the front there are people behind him so notice throughout this entire game every single time he attacks there's always he always puts himself in a position where there are people behind him enemies specifically it's okay if your allies are behind you but enemies those are those are not so good and as a result of it no he's going to get visored the from the back and it's uh, it's unfortunate. Hey, I just noticed we have five golds though and a silver. That's not too bad. Normally, I'm not a big metal guy, but I feel like I feel like the gold healing. I don't know. I don't know about that. And for this last one, we'll play. You uh, you guess the problem. It's the same one as always. But I. I, I think you'll see it for yourself this time. Anyway, thank you everyone who came and watched me cast the Athena Cup Open last Sunday. That was super great, so supportive of everybody. We got up to 500 plus viewers. It was really awesome. Everyone had a good time. So if you didn't come, then that's cool. You can come next time. And if you did come, then uh, thank you, thank you very much. And I'll be casting more stuff in the future, doing more events and stuff. So oh, follow me on Discord and on Twitter to uh, hear about that sort of stuff. Anyway, guys, did you spot what was wrong? I'll give you a hint. There was a roadhog behind him. Anyway, thank you so much for sending this in to the player who sent this in. And um, never forget to stay positive. And have a great day. Peace out, guys.